All right, quickly wanted to explain the notes over uh, Muhammad Nagib uh, right through here. I know there are some questions um, about his role within the Free Officers Movement, uh, particularly his fallout with Gamal Abdel Nasser. Um, background on Nagib is uh, he was born into a prominent Egyptian military family. Um, so the military was something that he has been around really his entire life. Uh, he's going to gain some prominence. He's going to found the Egyptian Armed Forces newspaper uh, in 1937. Now, this is going to be important for a number of reasons, but primarily it's just going to kind of help get his name out there, uh, make people be aware of this individual, particularly within the military ranks. Um, so he comes from a family that's already well known, particularly within the military. And he is also going to be kind of getting his own name out here, right here um, in 1937. He's going to become regional governor of the Sinai Peninsula in 1944. Um, and he's going to take leadership of the mechanized infantry in the Sinai in 1947. Now, geographically speaking, the Sinai is going to be very important um, because it is going to be uh, part of Egypt that is bordering what will become Israel, uh, which is going to lead into the Arab-Israeli War of 1948. Um, so it makes sense that this area is going to become particularly significant and important um, when you have this conflict with this newly created um, state by the UN right through here. Um, this is going to cause a lot of conflict. So he's going to be fighting in the Arab-Israeli War, and this is really where he's going to gain widespread national um national attention. He's going to be wounded seven times during the conflict. Uh, he's going to receive numerous awards, awards for his service in the war, and this is going to lead him to becoming director of the Egyptian Military Academy. Now, the Egyptian Military Academy is going to be where the free officers, FO here, are based originally. So the free officers are going to be coming into contact with Naghib at the um, at this academy, okay, the Egyptian Military Academy. Uh, all of the free officers are under the age of 35. Nasser, who is pretty much their figurehead and their leader, realizes that the movement is not going to be taken seriously if they do not have a senior official behind them. Um, because they were all 35, not very experienced, fairly new, uh, that doesn't happen. He was afraid that people will kind of dismiss them and not take them seriously if they don't have any experienced uh, and older leader. So they're going to approach Naguib uh, and basically put him as their leader. Uh, the free officers are going to see him as a figurehead only. Uh, there is some conflict on whether or not Naguib recognized this. Some will say that, yes, he did realize that he was more or less a figurehead puppet of the free officers. Um, others are going to be saying that, no, he was trying to kind of overpower the free officers and use them to come to his own power. Um, there is going to be a coup in 1952, which is going to remove King Farouk, um, replace the monarchy ultimately with the free officers. Okay, there's going to be some steps in between there, which I'm kind of glancing over, um, but it is important to understand that there is a coup in 1952. And the Gib is going to be appointed chief of the army. Now, this is done by the free officers primarily to keep the rest of the military uh, to support the free officers movement. Um, Naguib was well, well respected by the military. Therefore, if you put him in power, you're going to keep the military happy. Uh, this is something that is incredibly important when you are taking over a country um, because the military has the guns. You want to make sure they have the weapons um, and the people that have the weapons are supporting you. So he is going to be placed in lead uh, in charge of the military uh, commander of the army right then. Then the Egyptian monarchy is going to be abolished in September of 1952. Naguib is going to be appointed prime minister. Gamal Abdel Nasser is going to be appointed minister of the interior. So Naguib is going to be the leader of the country, more or less. Uh, Nasser, who is the leader of the free officers, um, is going to be minister of interior. So still a high power role, uh, but not quite as much power, not quite as much of a figure um, on the international stage as the prime minister would be. And then they're going to have the Republic of Egypt created shortly after. Naguib will be sworn in as the president. Uh, right away, we're going to have the Muslim Brotherhood outlawed. Um, again, when we understand and talking about Nasser. Nasser and the Muslim Brotherhood did not get along at all. Nasser is outlawing the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood did um, plot assassinations against Nasser. Um, so it's important to understand that this tension is right here. There is going to be a power struggle between Nasser and Naguib. Uh, Nasser is going to accuse him of supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and for wanting to be a dictator. Uh, he's going to be forced to resign after a short power struggle. He's going to be placed on house arrest, and then Nasser, Nasser is going to become the president shortly after. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview of Nasser and Naguib and their relationship and really what is going to come of this. Because um, it is important to understand that break and how Naguib was more or less a figurehead puppet um, for the free officers in order to gain some legitimacy. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. Otherwise, take care. See you later. Good luck.